You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have back on the Goldstein on Gelt show Kevin Mitnick. Kevin is perhaps one of the most famous hackers in the world. He's like from the movies where he breaks into all these computers. Uh, he's he's had a couple of run-in, run, run-ins with the law, which we'll talk about today. Uh, if you missed the first interview, which was real fascinating about ethical hacking, uh, be sure to download the podcast at goldsteinongelt.com or just check out the YouTube channel where we'll have a video of that at look up Goldstein on Gelt. Kevin, pleasure to have you back. Thank you. It's great to be back on your show so quickly. <laughs> in, in your days as a renegade hacker, what was your favorite hack? My favorite hack? Well, I got to tell you, you're going to be a little bit surprised. It was actually my hack into McDonald's. And it wasn't about getting a Big Mac. What <laughs> I worked out was I worked out how I could take over their drive-up window. So when customers would drive up to make an order, they would get me rather than the, the poor you know, guy oh, inside. Man. So when people would drive up, I would take their order, and then I would say, hey, you're the 100th customer today. Please drive forward your orders for free. But my favorite is when the cops would drive up, right? Oh the cops would drive up, and I would say, I'm sorry, sir. We don't serve you – know, we, don't, we, only, we don't serve burgers anymore to you guys. We only serve donuts. Or I would say, hide the cocaine, hide the cocaine. Oh, oh sir, <laughs> may I take your order, please? And, and it got so crazy that the manager of the McDonald's would go out into the parking lot. He's looking around, trying to figure out what's going on. He can't see anything. He walks up to the speaker for the drive-up window, and he actually peers inside as if a oh midget was hiding inside. And I key down the mic, and I go, what the hell are you looking at? And, you know, and the guy flies back 20 feet. So that was kind of one of my favorites. So where were you standing when you ran this hack? Oh, I was across the street because I modified my ham radio to go onto their frequency. So I was actually, I would say, a good quarter of a mile away. And you did this last month? Uh, no, I oh. did this when I was a little bit younger, like when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, you know. Right. You know so we're talking like, you know, 35 years ago. All right. So it seems that some of the, the, the uh, more exciting hacks that you did got people a little bit ticked off, and you ended up spending a little bit of time uh, in, at, as a guest of the, the government. Um, how, did yeah, that, yeah. how did that go for you? Well, not so well. I mean, I actually spent a year in solitary confinement, and what had happened is when I was arrested for hacking, and I went to uh, my first appearance in court and was expecting to get bail, the prosecutor started telling the judge, not only do we have to make sure Mr. Mitnick is held without bail, and don't forget, this is on a hacking case, we have to make sure he can't get access to a telephone, because if Mr. Mitnick gets access to a prison payphone, he could dial into NORAD, and he could whistle the launch codes and possibly cause a nuclear strike. And I started laughing in open court because I never heard something so preposterous in my life. Wait, I saw that movie, people. but there was a movie about this, about the kid. Right. And, yeah. War games. War games, I mean, right. Exactly out of war games. And to my amazement, the judge bought it hook, line, and sinker, and I sat in solitary confinement for almost a year because of this rumor that I could whistle the launch codes. And, of course, I have to ask you, this is, this is years ago, right? This was about this was about 1988. So is it okay for you to tell me now on you know in public? Could you in fact launch whistle the launch codes? Um, I've been practicing, <laughs> and I was going to actually um, try to uh, whistle it. Hold on a second, I, because I, uh, uh, I I I I should have prepared, but. Uh, I won't be able to. I won't be able to do it right now. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. All right. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I got to tell you, I, I definitely have been practicing. Okay. Well, let, let me know when you can do it. We'll bring you back on the air and, and do a little test run of that. Uh, Actually, of course... I had a little, little cute video. It's a guy whistling the theme to Mission Impossible, and all of a sudden you hear the airstrike sirens going off and explosions. But I didn't have time to to, to have the audio recording ready for you. Right. <laughs> so. We'll, we'll do that next time. All right. So I understand that some of the trouble you had was uh, you know, came up when the FBI was was tracking some of your actions. And uh, is it true that you actually left them a gift? Yeah. What had happened is 
the FBI sent this informant to entrap me, and I kind of figured it out after a few weeks. So what I did is I wanted to figure out who the informant was communicating with. So I hacked into a cell phone provider <laughs> in Los Angeles called AirTouch. Well, it was actually Pactel Cellular, and it was acquired by AirTouch later. And this is back when you had analog cell phones. So I hacked into their network, and it gave me access to the call detail records. So what I could actually do is any calls that Pactel cellular customers made, I could see, and anyone that called a Pactel cellular uh, number, I could see who called. So what I did is I searched, uh, I had the, the, the informant's pager number, his voicemail number, and his home number. So I basically searched Pactel cellular for anyone that called him, and I came up with a list of numbers. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at their billing records, and I, my jaw almost dropped when, I, when, the, when one number kept showing up. It was 310-477-6565, and that was the number for the headquarters of the FBI in Los Angeles. So right there, I knew something was very, very wrong. So what I did is I worked as a PI at the time, and I set up a device in my office. So if any of these cell phones came within you know, a couple miles of me, I'd get an early warning alert. And how that worked is when, you, when you're on a cell phone and you move into an area, it, the cell phone has to register with the cell site. Right. So I was able to monitor the cell site traffic to look for these numbers that were appearing in the area. And then maybe a month later, I walk into the office. I hear this weird beeping. It's coming from my mm -hmm. office. I look at my computer. My early warning system is tripped. It turns out that federal agents were at, were at my house two hours earlier. But at that time, I was sleeping at my house. So I started thinking, like, why would they be there? They didn't knock on the door. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're right there. They're calling a payphone the, across the street from my apartment. So then I figured maybe they're getting an affidavit to get a search warrant because they actually have to go physically out there and make a description, you know, for the court of, you know, of the place to search. Okay. And uh, so the next day, nothing happened. And then I go, you know what? These guys might show up any day. So I, I took everything of interest that the government would have out of my apartment. And I went to Winchell's Donuts and I bought a big assorted dozen donuts and I wrote in on a with a Sharpie FBI donuts. <laughs> I put it in the refrigerator, and on a big post-it note in my refrigerator, I go, FBI donuts inside, kind of like Intel inside. Uh -huh. And <laughs> you know what? That morning at 6 a.m., they raided me. Uh. They, they didn't find any computer equipment. They did find the donuts, but they didn't eat any. Uh -huh. So, you know, so they were pretty upset. That's amazing. We are, we are talking again with Kevin Mitnick. Kevin was previously on the Goldstein on Geld show. If you missed the first interview, check it out at goldsteinongeld.com or just go to YouTube and look up Goldstein on Geld. Kevin, you've got obviously many, many fascinating stories, some of which you wrote in your autobiography, which came out last year and became a New York Times bestseller called Ghost in the Wires. Now that you've turned to actually be helping the government and helping companies, do you get the feeling that they're still watching you? Possibly, but it's kind of it's it, it's kind of like my stories, like Catch Me If You Can, is the same uh, government agencies and the same companies that were uh, trying to put me in prison years ago now hire me to help them with their security. Like for example, uh, uh, the FBI's InfraGuard division uh, had me uh, speak at an event in Texas. Um, I get hired by you know major companies to do security work. So it's kind of like you know. This, you know, I'm glad that the, these companies were able to look past my, you know, unethical hacking years and now realize that I'm here to help. And I use my skills to help businesses, governments and universities protect themselves. So I'm really appreciative that I have this opportunity and I've been doing it for the last nine years. OK, so as this show is really a, a personal finance show, explain to me what normal people could or should be doing should they even be worried if you know regular guy in his house in his home office just you know keeps track on uh, on quicken of his stocks and bonds you know w what should normal people do to protect themselves or should they really be worried about this yeah they should be concerned i mean if you open if you go to an airport or you go to a, a coffee shop and you're using open wireless i would use a, uh, a service that you could probably subscribe to for maybe 10 bucks a month uh, it's called virtual private networking and uh uh, it's, it's called VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Networking. So you could sign up for one of these accounts, you know, and as soon as you connect to the wireless network, you connect to the VPN service. So that way everything is encrypted in an encrypted tunnel. So a hacker cannot tamper with your connection. Uh, 
one uh, one of the uh, big threats today on the internet is social engineering. Somebody sends you an office document, a PDF file. As soon as you open it, it's booby trapped, mm -hmm. and now the hacker has complete control of your computer. You know, I would use Google Docs. Somebody sends me a document, an email. I don't open it on my computer. I open it in Google Docs. I use Quick View for the PDFs. Um, another major problem is password management. People use the same password on multiple sites. So when if a hacker compromises one site, they have your password for everywhere else. So you can get, download a free password manager. Uh, there's KeePass, K-E-E Pass. There's Password Gorilla. There's Password Safe, and these. This is, these are great tools because you basically, on your, on your computer, put in all your passwords. It's all encrypted. You have to memorize one single password, a master password. As soon as you go to your website to log in, it automatically will paste your password in there. It makes the passwords random. They're all different. And your security is significantly, exponentially improved with, for a free product and very little work. And the product is called what? There's password safe. Is one of them. There's Key Pass, K E E Pass, and there's Password Gorilla. These are all uh, free, you know, uh, free. You know, they're you don't have to pay for them, and you can uh, Google. You can Google for password managers. But I like Key Pass. I would recommend Key Pass, K E E P A S S. It works for uh, the, it works on Windows. It works on Mac, and it's absolutely free. All right. So now that you've been, uh, not that I want to call you old, but you're you're not a teenager anymore. So a lot of the guys, you know. You see who are young and real hotshots and trying to, to, to be great hackers. Do you feel that you can still compete with them? Really, what I want to ask is, are you still hacking today? Well, I am hacking. Um, I was hacking last night, and I actually was able to break into the company. Uh, actually, it was a little bit difficult. It actually took about a week. But in this case, I did it with permission. Unlike you know what I used to do many, many years ago is I'm still a hacker today, but I do it with authorization. So companies hire me to test their security. So using the same methodologies I used to use in my younger years, whether it's exploiting physical security vulnerabilities, technical vulnerabilities, you know, vulnerabilities with your people, what we call human factor vulnerabilities, is companies want to know how vulnerable they are, so they hire companies like mine to test their security. And that way they know what they need to fix before the real bad guys get in. Okay, that sounds like a very good first first step for both companies as well as individuals. Kevin, in the last few seconds, just tell me, how can people find out more about what you're doing and keep track of it? Sure. Uh, my website uh, is www.mitnick, that's M like Mary, I-T, N like Nancy, I-C-K, security.com. My book, uh, which is called Ghost in the Wires, which is a New York Times bestseller now, my autobiography, you can go to ghostinthewires.com. Okay. All right, Kevin Mitnick, once again, it was a pleasure to have you. For those of you who missed the first interview, go to goldsteinongelt.com and download the podcast or check it out on YouTube at Goldstein on Gelt. Kevin Mitnick, thanks again. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.